All right. How y'all doing? All right. Ready to talk money? All right. All right. So, um, so I have something to sell you. I know now all of a sudden I went silent, right? Here's the only thing I got to sell you on. Is the possibility of your dreams are within reach. Everything we're going to talk about today is really about that. It's really about this whole idea that, that all those dreams that seem to have gone out of reach, that you think maybe are in the darkness, it's time to dust them off. I truly believe that financial independence is a birthright. We just need to understand how to claim it. So we're going to walk through some things today. I've got a lot of stuff I want to, I want to cover to try and help you out with this whole process. And look, money is a uh, challenging subject to, to talk about because people seem to demonize it. But it's with money that we have the opportunity to change movements, to change communities, to change society, to change our lives, to create legacy in the moment. So when we look at this, I want to talk about the four wealth principles for today's affluent entrepreneurs. Now, I talk about the term affluence, and a lot of people confuse affluence with opulence. They're not the same. See, affluence, in, in my mind, has four aspects to it. It's not about luxury. It's about living. See, affluence, first, has to be meaningful. It has to, it has to be something that internally just, just excites you, brings you joy. The second thing that it needs to be is it has to be impactful. In other words, if, if meaningful is internal, impactful is external, it's outside. We get to make a, a, a shift in people's lives, whether it's the people we love, the people that, that are living with us, or the people we serve. The third aspect, and this is the only aspect that has to do with money, is it needs to be fruitful. We got to pay the bills. And the fourth be an affluent life is it needs to be peaceful. Peace comes from the fact that you're living your life in alignment with what your beliefs are, what you were called here to do, what you were meant to do, in alignment with your values, that every day you wake up and you show up, and to know that the people in your life are taken care of. They introduced me, you don't need to worry about this, I'm a CPA. My son thinks that CPA stands for can't pass again, so um, my wife thinks it stands for constant pain in the, uh, well, you can complete it. I'm just looking at the chat up there, chat, and, and those of you in, in, in the, the virtual rooms, hey, say hello. All right, so let's just talk about this. I want to I have a conversation about this piece. I want to go backwards to here. I grew how many of you grew up in a family, in a household where they said, don't talk about money. <laughs> it's impolite. Yeah, I did too. All right. I did too. But here's the thing. Money is really a difficult topic because it's emotional. It's personal. You'll watch people that will forsake their health, their relationships. For money. They'll forsake their ethics for money. But the fact is, is that we demonize the money in the process and we don't want to talk about it. But it's not the money that's the issue. Money is agnostic. It's, it's a tool. And just like any tool, that hammer can build a cathedral, a palace, or it can tear it down. It's how we use it. See, money is simply that. So if we are willing to have a safe and sane conversation around money, then let me see in the chat room that you say yes, and out here say yes. yes. All right, so here's the deal, because if we have money issues, we won't solve money problems without having conversations around them because of the fact that there isn't a problem in the world that doesn't get solved without a conversation. 
I did, an interview, I did interviews of many, many entrepreneurs, people that started out, just starting out, to billionaires all across the board. Every single one of them, without question, every single one of them, without question, had shame, guilt, and embarrassment around money. Some were guilty because they had it. Some were guilty because they had it and lost it. Some were guilty because they didn't have it. But it was still there. It's an emotional topic. Let's have the conversation, though. I learned this at the hands of a six-year-old boy. See, I was a CPA. I had partners. And back in, in the mid-'90s, they came to me and said, Hey, Mel, we don't want to be partners anymore. I go, what? They pushed me out the door. I had no clients. I had no client backlog. I had no cash flow. It was $300,000 in debt. But I had a purpose. That purpose is this little boy. That's my son. He came to live with me. At five and a half years old, I became a single full-time dad. So it was the same year that they pushed me out the door. I sat back and I said, the greatest gift that I was given is to be a dad. And here I am with no job, no work, in debt. How am I going to do this? So I did what most entrepreneurs do. I got on the treadmill. I put my head down. I started running. I thought I was doing the right thing because all of a sudden I started getting clients and I started getting cash flow and things were going well. And Jeremy comes running in from school one day and he says, Daddy, 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 I drew a picture of your school today. Now, I was excited. He was excited. I knelt down. I grabbed this picture and this is what it looked like. I was screwing it up. Yeah, exactly. Wow. See, I could have looked at Jeremy at that point, and I almost did, and said, hey, but kid, this is, this is how we keep the roof of our heads. This is how we get to do the things that we want to do. The profits, we need the profits so we can do those things. And in his eyes, though, he didn't care about my profits. He cared about my presence. And in that moment is when I realized, because I had a whole lot of people in my, in my ears sitting back saying, Mel, you got to get work-life balance. And I go, okay. But work-life balance, got a secret for you. It's a myth. It's a myth. Because balance insinuates that what you're going to do is you're going to have one weight over here, you're going to have a counterweight over here, and there are forces that are working against each other. You can't live in a work bucket for eight or ten hours and then go home and expect to live in a different personality. It's not about work-life balance. It's about work-life harmony. Everything's got to work together because every choice you make, money, business, personal, they're all life choices. They affect lives. So I had to look at it through those eyes. That's when I started to look at money differently, business differently. I said, how do I create a business and a financial standing that allows me to take care of and cherish the gift that I was given of fatherhood. To build a business that gave me the freedom to take care of that gift. And so that's where all of what I'm doing comes from. And it came full circle to me why the importance of this was about three years ago. See, three years ago, a little, little less than three years ago, I stepped off this plane. That's a G5. If you've never flown on a G5, you've got to do it at least once in your life and hope that someone else pays for it. I stepped off that plane after masterminding with some of the top entrepreneurs around, $100 million, billionaires. We're doing things. We're flying back. We're having a great time. I'm speaking on big stages. I just finished a big launch, and things are great. Two weeks later, after I stepped off that plane, I found myself here. I heard three words that may you never hear in your life. You have cancer. I go, what? They found a five-centimeter tumor in my bladder. When they went in to take it out, this was the day they were going in to take it out, the doctor comes in, he says, you understand what we're going to do here today? And I said, yeah, you're going to take that doggone tumor out. He says, yeah, but. I go, well, but from a doctor is not what you want. He says, uh, it's on top of the prostate. 
So we might have to remove the prostate. We can't see the ureter on the right side. So we might have to put a tube in and a bag for the kidney. And if it's really bad, you might lose your bladder. So my life got flipped upside down. It got turned over and I sit back and this is not about the cancer. This is about are you prepared when life happens? Because it will. I knew in that moment that I'm going to have to shut everything down. I'm going to have to sit back and say, I'm going to stop the business. I'm going to focus on my healing. I'm going to focus on my family. I'm going to focus on the things that are important right here and now. And, and doing business wasn't one of them. But here's the beautiful thing. What I learned from a six-year-old boy and the things that you're going to learn here today allowed me to do that without sacrificing. In other words, I fought the cancer. Medically, I fought the cancer emotionally. I fought the cancer energetically. I fought the cancer spiritually, psychologically. But I didn't have to fight the cancer financially. When they went in, they found that the tumor wasn't five centimeters. It was seven and a half centimeters. It took them six and a half hours to get it out. Fast forward. Um, three surgeries in, four tumors down, 42 treatments in, and completely cancer-free. The point is this. It really isn't about the money. 